Will Hilda make it to Rustaval? A question that literally some people have asked, uh, not many, but some. Um, and the answer is, I don't know. So I thought what I'd do in this quick video, and it will be quick, is I will uh, I'll just give a quick update on Hilda, where it is at the moment, because in an ideal world, I'd have been filming the progress, um, kind of like I did in the, in the Goodwood videos. I did a little race to Goodwood video and I was trying to get it ready a couple of years ago for that track day. Um, not many people watched them, so I was like, mm, is, is there any point? But then at the same time, it's like, yeah, but you don't do that for that. You just do it for the enjoyment. I haven't had time to film what I'm doing on this car. I just haven't. I've been, I mean, that's why like the ramp is just absolutely chock a, it's chock -a block with things that have come off other cars. That's on the floor now. Spark plugs from a TVR. Uh, I haven't even had a chance to clean the ramp, let alone the floor. I've been flat out on this car. Uh, it's Sunday today. I've come in on a Sunday to do this. I was here yesterday from about half nine till eight in the evening, something like that, working on this car. The plan is to try and get this thing to Rustaval. Rustaval is an event created by with the Hubnut clan um, and uh, Furious Driving and Steph iDriver Classic with a lot of background help from Matt Pink, um, who was on our live stream. Well, all of those were on our live stream actually last year, the Sophie's Legacy one. But um, yeah, they've they put together this event. It's actually, it does, I like the sound of it. It's it's different to all the other car shows. There's, there's a lot of it that is different. One of the things with Rust of All is that they're gonna have a whole range of, I'm not going to say the I word. Hmm. Content creator? People on YouTube and stuff like that. They're going to have a little layout of those and there's going to be a few cars in that layout. And Hilda is supposed to be one of the cars in that. I'm taking two cars. I mean, I'm not taking two cars. We're taking the Saxo as well. So the Saxo that was on the video the other day um, that's on the 20 years where the Saxo Instagram uh, channel will be there, um, which more people are excited about than... <laughs> that um and uh, yeah and also hilda if hilda doesn't make it um it'll be the c6 i know C the c6 is probably the more po well the c6 is a more popular car than this one but i want to drive this one so yeah that's the plan the plan is to try and get hilda there now whether we'll, i'll do that or not i don't know as it stands there are two weeks and six days Yeah, Hilda is in quite a few pieces at the moment. Um, so what I thought I'd do in this quick video is uh, just go through the progress on Hilda, what's been happening. I can't, I haven't filmed what I've been doing. So I thought well, I'll just quickly show what I've done so far um, and also catch up with Gearbox fun and games because obviously that's the main reason this car uh, got taken apart a little while ago. There has been progress on that. Um, in fact, yes, I have it with me. I was just trying to think the gearbox is in the back of the C6. Is the C6 outside? Yes, it is. Then I shall get the gearbox. All right, here we go. Oh, stood on some DS bits. Sorry, right, it's not, a D, not really a DS. There we go. Bubble wrap. Oh, <coughs> my bed sheets. Might be a gearbox in there somewhere. Right. So, this gearbox is... I'm not gonna say new gearbox, because it isn't. But it's not Hilda's original gearbox. Because, Hilda's original gearbox was lunched, absolutely screwed. So basically this gearbox is, well, the bell housing of it is my original one, but everything from here backwards is not, because on mine, everything from here backwards was knackered. Well, say every, it wasn't everything, but basically, uh, I mean, I don't have, unfortunately, I didn't think to say to him, don't throw the old bits away, but uh, I have a couple of pictures, which obviously I can show on the screen. Um, the main issue with it we could find was that it looked like it had just massively overheated. Uh, not entirely sure why. Doesn't make full sense. Uh, he suspects that some of the preloads inside may have been a little bit too tight. So obviously as things heat up, they expand. And if you've got a tolerance on a bearing, 
and then everything heats up, that tolerance gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and if the bearing gets too hot, or the bush in there or whatever, you start getting damage. I think that's what's happened. Um, the oil was that kind of colour because of all the bronze that had kind of melted and broken up and dissolved into the oil. Um, that a lot of the bronze bushes and things inside it were just absolutely wrecked and they had in turn wrecked some of the shafts as well so basically everything here backwards is kind of it's not new but it's like new, it's used it's like from another box basically uh, you know going forward I mean my worry was well is it not going to do it again well firstly I'm not going to drive it around Goodwood flat out secondly I think if it was set a little too tight prolonged high speed run probably would kill it um, and so I won't be doing too many of those and when I was going to Goodwood last time I do remember on the way there I thought it was getting a little bit whiny but I was late for the day and I was racing my way there to get there for the driver briefing and I was pushing on a bit on the A27 and I can't help but think I might have been it might have been whining a bit then uh, and it had never done that before. But of course, I never really sit on a motorway at pushing on speeds uh, for a sustained period of time before. If I ever got on the motorway in this normally, you might get a burst where you go up to a higher speed, but most of the time I'll sit at 60 because it's just so bloody noisy. So I wonder perhaps if this is an issue that would have been there from day one, had it had that kind of use from day one. So yeah, this time, this one is slightly looser, I believe. Could be slightly whinier, slightly knockier, rattly I don't care if it heats up and it's happy I'm happy long term what to do um, I did think about things like oil coolers and things like that nothing like that's going to get done before Rustaville uh, so the journey that it has to Rustaville if Hill does make it to Rustaville will be the same kind of journey that a normal Hillman imp would undertake it would just be 60 mile an hour very little load going through it regardless of what engine it's connected to that engine's going to be barely more than ticking over well that won't that's a lie it'll be doing 4,000 RPM, but there'll be no load on the throttle. So shouldn't make a difference as to where the engine it's connected to. Uh, there'll be no spirited driving if it does go to Rustaville. It'll be basically, it'll be the test drive because it'll, it'll only have just been put back together like a couple of days before. Why do I always cut these things so fine with this car? Why is there always a time limit or a deadline? So yeah, that can go back in, but it can't go back in yet because I'm doing stuff at the other end. Yeah, so you can't really see it in here because the lighting is poor, but uh, there's no back end in there at all. I mean, the subframe, the rear subframe is in there, but it's only held on with a couple of bolts. Uh, it, otherwise it's loose. The only thing still here is some wiring, um, some of which I've cut and will end up redoing, um, and some brake pipes, which I would quite like to remove and do better because they're not very good. I, don't, I can't remember who did those but um, it wasn't me. They are pretty ugly. So yeah, I don't know if I'll get time to do that or not. We'll see. Um, but the thing is, while the engine's out, this is time to do all this. It's time to rub down the bulkhead because it's been painted with so many different versions of Hammerite or Rust Buster or Paw 15 or whatever. And it's just like, I just want to take it all off and do it body color in there like it's meant to be. But I don't think I'm gonna have the time to do it if I choose to take it to Rustable. So I'm kind of in that in that in-between point where you think, don't rush this because you don't have the engine out very often. No, that's a lie, I do have the engine out often. Well, hopefully you won't have the engine out very often. So don't rush it, do it while it's out, do it properly. Or there's only one rust of all this year and I did want to take this and I enjoy driving this car. So it's a tough call. Um, Basically, the back of the car has been stripped down a lot more than it was when you last saw it. And the reasons for that is that I've been redoing something that I did a couple of years ago before Goodwood. I rushed some stuff last year. Uh, I'll show you, we'll go around the other side to show you that one. So we're in the cabin. And, uh, oh yeah, look at the effect. It's like a warm effect in here. It's just the poor lighting. Uh, so as you can see, it is in many pieces. Now, um, there's no seat base here at the moment, but there is still a seat backrest. Way back when, uh, Hilda didn't used to have rear seats at all. The coolant pipes for the radiator at the front, because it has a front mounted radiator, normally imps would have a rear one, went up over the top of that hump and through the rear bulkhead here, which is what most people with an imp who put a front mounted radiator in 
do and they forego the rear seats. But I didn't want to forego the rear seats, I wanted to put them in because I had little kiddies and they were like going out. No, that thing, that sounds dodgy. I have children, my own, and they like going out in this car, but they got upset because only one could go at a time. And I thought this is ridiculous. It's supposed to have four seats. So I put all this work into putting the rear seats in. And since then they've all grown up. Now they're too big to go in it. So, well, we'll find out, but I don't expect they want to go out with daddy anymore. Uh, so um, I did still put the rear seats in because it just looks better that way. Um, but that meant I couldn't run the pipes through the rear bulkhead. I've touched on this before on a different video. So I ran them through here. So those pipes there are steel pipes and they're welded to the floor. So that one's welded to the seat mount. That one's welded to the front seat mount there. So they're, they're not strong. I mean, well, technically they're structural, but they're not really structural. Uh, it just stops them moving around and vibrating and rubbing into each other and rubbing things I don't want them to rub. Um, now, what I did do is the bit, you can't really see it because it's so dark, but under here, it, there's two little ports where it goes through and it meets the rear subframe. So you see these two little spigots here. Uh, I did a version of that way back when, um, before Goodwood, uh, not last year, year before, and I did a hatchet job on it. I rushed it um, because it was, you know, well, this was it here. These, I made these and yeah, they're all a bit, yeah, that was something that went through it. Um, it was all a bit, ugh. Uh, I was just desperate to get it on and it did get there, but it was very difficult to work on. Uh, there was very poor access, oh, that's the other one there. There was very poor access to everything. Yeah, I had to bend them like, I haven't got a proper bender. Um, it was, uh, yeah, the access was bad. They leaked. So it was leaking coolant out here, which wasn't ideal. Um, and I just got sick of it. So I thought, no. So uh, I've redone it all. Because I've got the engine out, and to take the rear subframe out, you've pretty much got to take the engine out because this gearbox sits in the rear subframe. Um, I, I thought, well, it's out now, so let's do it. Let's go for it. So I've done it. I made a lot of changes, um, made some modifications. Um, we'll see if it works. I don't know if it will or it won't. I, I, I think it will. It's uh, a, an evolution of a plan that I did uh, way, back, uh, way back in my head. But basically, the rear subframe has the pipes welded into it. So the rear subframe is now part of the cooling system, which is completely normal. Uh, yeah, so we'll see if it works. Um, but there, it's all kind of lined up now. It's not fully installed, but it's pretty much done. I've got to take the subframe off and paint it. Uh, I've got to paint the uh, body behind the subframe because that's still as it was. It's just exactly as it used to be. It's just the two small holes in it. Well, the pipes post through and the pipes post through the holes and end up in here. So that's really the only difference, but it's all, none of it's painted. It's, it's all a bit rough. Um, so I will do that. Uh, what I've also done, um, I've made a change to the heater circuit. The heater circuit, the heater circuit never used to work brilliantly. Um, let's bring the car down. So the heater circuit never, I'm not gonna knock this gearbox off. Um, the heater circuit never used to work fantastically well. Uh, the entry and exit to the heat matrix is there. In fact, to be honest with you, it never used to have the heater even plumbed in. It was never even connected. Uh, it was just, um, yeah, just sat there dormant, capped off. So it never even had a demister or a heater or anything. Now it has that, That's that needs fully installing. That's just in temporarily to offer some kind of demisting because uh, the radiator is where the, behind here, where the heater would normally go. So or the heater motor would go, the blower motor. Um, that is a breather pipe. Um, so basically, uh, the heater matrix is behind here. And what I'd done originally, because originally in a Hillman Imp, the heater, one pipe to the matrix used to go up one sill and the other side, the return or feed, whichever way around they were, used to go up the other side. Now, Hilda had nothing on the passenger side and on the driver's side had uh, some wiring looms and things for the ECU. So there was nothing I could do. Uh, I didn't want to put more hoses through the car and I thought, well, what I did was I put, I made the coolant hoses to the radiator big. So they're 35 mil uh, diameter, in, in a diameter, which for this engine is probably bigger than it needs, especially as there's five miles of it. Uh, and then what I did is there's a spigot here for the heater and there's a thermostat there. Uh, the thermostat in the engine was removed, hoping, perhaps somewhat optimistically, 
that the uh, then the heater thermostat circuit would extend here and use this as the bypass. Uh, that heater valve there is an on off switch. So it's like hot on for hot or off for cold. It just opens or shuts, that's it. Um, and yeah, hope and then this thermostat here would stay shut until this got hot, means the heater would warm up before the radiator tried operating uh, and force it through there. It did work. The return, as I say, the sorry, the return goes up into the head of the tank. No, that's the return there to the head of the tank. It did work, um, but not amazingly. It was sort of like it would go tepid. It wouldn't go hot. And in the summer, obviously, that's fine. In the winter, it was a bit of a pain. Um, it, I didn't run it like this for very long. It was more of a sort of mend and make do with the situation at the time. But now I can change it. Now I've had an opportunity to change it, which means I shall be ditching this remote thermostat down here, if anyone wants to buy a remote thermostat, uh, and putting in the original thermostat back in the engine. I'm pointing to the engine bay, I don't know why, because the engine is there, but put the thermostat back in that. And then from the heater port on the engine will run. Yes. Got a heater hose. Runs directly from the engine up to the heater matrix. Nothing to do with the radiator. It goes, ouch, through that hole. So that will connect, ooh. Mm, fluffy. Just saying. Uh, it goes through there, so that will be trimmed and connected to the engine wherever it needs to go. And then the other end of it goes as it did uh, originally with a Hillman Imp. It goes, and it, oh, I can see it, it's there. So that will get plumbed into the heater circuit and then the radiator will be completely separate, which means that thermostat down here will go, which means the one on the engine will go back in and it will basically behave like the heater in a Saxo or a Hillman Imp um, would behave. The only difference is the return on a Hillman Imp, because there was no radiator at the front, it had to have a return. It had to have the feed and the return. Well, the return isn't going to be here on Hilda because it will return into the header tank. So that return circuit will always be flowing as long as the heat is open. Um, it's only the feed circuit that will be thermostat controlled. It, it should work. I don't know why this has rusted so badly, but none of the others have. They're all mild steel. That one's starting. It's not even stainless. But one of them's just gone, no. So yeah, so this is the plan. So that's not been too difficult. I did that in an evening, get that hose. It was a bit of a faff, but I got that hose in. So yeah, hopefully it will start going back together this week. I need to paint some stuff but I haven't really got time to do it today. I was hoping to do it today, but I haven't got time. Um, it's, just the, it's just the time that this thing's taken. It's, uh, I sp I'm not joking, I've spent so long on that subframe. It's unbelievable. Uh, should Hilda make it to Rust of All, it will not be a finished car. It will not be finished in here. There are still things that need doing. I suspect the dashboard will look pretty much like it does there, won't it? There's supposed to be another bit of carbon fiber that goes over the top of all this to make it look nice, but. I don't think that'll be done. Uh, hopefully it'll have more carpets than it's got. Battery, that's going in the bin. Um, done some reading. And I've had some suggestions actually in the last video about the battery and it looks like that might be, although to be fair, I think they are the same as this. This The one that people are suggesting is what this is. It's just that's a branded one and costs a lot more. So I shall go the way the other people have suggested because it's a non-branded version and is much cheaper. Uh, yeah, so with things like that, I mean, I was like, I was hoping to change all this. I don't like this. I wanted to put the carpeted stuff in with the pockets and the trims and everything, but I think that's just going to have to be realistic. Headlining's minging as well. But you've got to take the roll cage out to do that. So, yeah, I think we've got to be realistic about, you know, if I want it to go to Rustable, I need to be realistic that about, you know, what I'm going to get done, basically. Those holes there are for the mirror. They just got whacked in there because this door... These doors are absolute garbage. Um, looks nice, doesn't it? But it's not. The, the panel fit is terrible. They went to a body shop and the, the fella who did it, not the guy who painted it, the guy who painted it got a nice finish. Um, but the fella who did the panel work on it, Jesus Christ. It's like bubbling up here somewhere. Because it's just filler everywhere. There's filler in there, all around there. There was a big chunk of filler in the front arch that fell out. It's rusting again. Muppet. So, uh, yeah, nothing lines up. The doors don't line up at all. The shape of them completely wrong. So, um, yeah, a bit of a bummer, but there you go. 
So yeah, I've got two two good doors. Well, they're probably not good anymore because I had them shot blasted and then they've just been sat around. So they're probably knackered now. Um, so yeah, basically that's that's the state Hilda's in. I hope it'll be at Rustaville. Uh, 9th of March at the Great British Motor Museum, I think it is, or the British Motor Museum, the one in Gaydon. The one where they've got loads of stuff. Um, hopefully Hilda will be there. If not, it'll be a C6. Uh, yeah, well, that's pretty much all I've got on Hilda. Um, yeah, I've done, I've done tons on it. I've, I've been putting loads of hours into it, all in the evenings and things as well. So my home life is just like non-existent at the moment. Can't afford to work on it during work time. I've got to work on customer stuff. I can't afford not to. So yeah, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not, but I'm trying. It won't be for a lack of trying. If it's not there, it'll be somewhere else. It's got to be done because it's got to come off the ramp because it's already on the ramp way longer than it's meant to be. I've had to reschedule two jobs already. But yeah, hopefully see you at Rustaville. Uh, should be a really good event. Sounds sounds great, actually. Some There's some cool people going. A right old range of cars, anything. There, there's no rules on cars at all. Nothing. All these stupid little car meets and shows where they have like, oh, it can't be older than, I can't be newer than this, or it can't be. It's got, I mean, there's one round here where they're like, it's got to have more than 400 horsepower. <laughs> what? You know, this one's just like, no, if you like the car, you can come in. If you're into cars, or you just want to see some cars, or you love your car, just bring it in. Doesn't matter what it is. Not everyone in there is going to love it. There's going to be probably loads of modern stuff that I'll just be like, eh. it doesn't matter. There'll be some people in there who do. It's a mix. It's a, you know, it's, it's something for everyone. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea, uh, Rust of all, and I'm looking forward to going. And hopefully Hilda will be the car there. So uh, hopefully see you there. Um, I don't think I'll be having much of a stall on the go. They've said you can have a stall and bring your merch. There you go, merch, look. Said you can have a stall and bring your merch and things, but I haven't really got, I don't really keep stock of anything. It's all done to order. So might have some stickers and things. I, I'll see, I'll see. I've probably not got much time to sort it. Too busy working on this. Yeah, sorry, it's not a proper working on a car video. It's just I haven't got, I've, I've not had time to film and work on the car at the same time. So hopefully that will resume after Rust of All. After Rust of All, when hopefully Hilda is done, uh, TVR will be coming soon because I need to get that moving. Um, and then when the TVR is done and I've got one of my other cars to do, on my own cars, on the, I don't know if you've seen the new car I talked about. If you have, that one. If you haven't, you'll find out what I mean. Um, yeah, I don't know what order I'm putting this out in. And then eventually, when those are all sorted, I can finally get on the SM. That's the plan. So just need to get these done first. So uh, anyway, I'm going to stop talking and go home and edit this.